in today's video, I'm going to be giving you my top tips for keeping on top of your house with chronic illness. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, with my chronic illness, it feels like I spend half the week or more in bed. When I'm up and about, I have to work and do all my responsibilities, and I just never get time for the housework. And any little bit of housework I can do, it feels like I can never keep up with it. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with this video today. So let's get into it. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm really pleased to have you here. So if you've been watching me for any length of time, then you do know that I suffer with a couple of chronic illnesses that I've had for about 13 to 14 years. Just very quickly to give you context into what I'm talking about, I'm diagnosed with ME or chronic fatigue syndrome. The main symptom, as you can guess from the name, is fatigue, but it's also pain, brain fog, all sorts of other stuff. You can look it up. I'll leave some links down below. I also suspect that I have fibromyalgia, although I'm not diagnosed, and MCAS. There'll be information to all of that down below. Suffice to say, my daily life is a real struggle. My energy reserves are very, very limited and what energy I have, I'm very restricted because of the pain that I experience. I had a fall back in February, you can watch this video, and I've got some coccyx pain from that, so getting up and down is a real problem for me. But I am aware that everyone's chronic illness is very, very different. So what works for me may not work for you, but some of what works for me may inspire you or give you some kind of inspiration to give it a go for yourself and see. But just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, so anything I'm discussing is not medical advice, far from it. I'm just talking about what works for me and it might just give you some ideas. If not, I hope it's an entertaining video for you. My one big takeaway from this is I never want you to go past your own personal limitations. And I also need to say that while it may look like I've got my shit together because I put out my best self on YouTube, it is not the case. My house is in a disarray. I'm struggling with these tips as much as you, but when I do implement these tips, they are what works. There are one or two I haven't tried, but I do see benefit in them. But I'll talk about that as we go through. So without further ado, let's get into the tips. So the first thing is when you have chronic illness, or it might be that you know someone else who has chronic illness, perhaps someone close to you, a family member or a friend, it's very important for the chronic sufferer to understand that the world is not going to stop if you do not do housework. So all the other tips come off the back of this one. So I remember when I was being diagnosed, that is something that my specialist said to me. I said to her, I just can't do everything. I can't keep on top of my house. It was a real struggle for me at that time and it's still struggle for me now. And she said to me, no one's going to die if you don't do your housework. And this is so so true and it really gave me a different perspective on the household and it actually released me from a lot of guilt now as chronic health sufferers we do experience a lot of guilt and that kind of reduced my guilt for me so it might be something for you to think about if you haven't already that you know what is going to happen if that housework that bit of mess on the side doesn't get tidy today and it gets tidy tomorrow instead the next tip I have for you is one that's easier said than done, but it is possible. And that is to ask people around you to pull their weight. Now, depending on the personalities around you, if you've got people around you, you may not have anyone around you. In that case, this tip won't apply to you. But if you do have people around you and there's the sort of people that don't pull their weight, it's time for them to pull their weight. And you may have a struggle getting this to happen, especially if you maybe you've got the type of partner who will moan about the mess and expect you to clean it up. They need a talking to, basically. I don't want to get involved in anyone's relationships here, but it is not fair on 
all the expectation of the housework to be left on you when you are very, very poorly. So the next tip is to do your housework in bite sizes. So maybe all you can manage is five minutes. Do five minutes and then rest for as long as you need. And you might come back to it later in the day. There's nothing to say you've got to spend an hour or two hours in one go doing all the housework. You can do five minutes here or there and things will still get done, albeit they'll take much longer to be done, but they will get done. It's much better to be able to do the odd five minutes or the odd 10 minutes or however long you can manage than do nothing at all and get completely overwhelmed with it. Now, I know for me, when I had my first home before I was ill, my pattern would be to blitz my home and then do nothing for like five or six days. And then it'll get to, into a state again and I would blitz it again. Now, obviously, when I got ill, I wasn't able to do that and I did have to take it a lot easier. And over the years of um, playing around with what works with me, I do find doing bits and pieces a little bit each day does actually help. Just before we go any further, I do have a poll up on my community tab at the moment. I'd love it if you would go over and take part in that poll because it will inform my future videos. So I've got a couple of polls. One poll is asking if you do have chronic illness. And the other poll is if you have chronic illness, which areas of chronic illness do you suffer with the most? And I'm not talking about pain and fatigue, but I'm talking about isolation, relationships, um, housework, that kind of thing. If you could go fill that out, that would be really, really helpful. So the next tip speaks to the last tip. In fact, it's like one step further, and that is to pace yourself with your housework. So as I was saying before, you could do the odd five or 10 minutes when you've got the energy. Additionally to that, you could be a little bit more structured and paced. So that means perhaps doing five minutes housework and a 20 minute rest and then getting back to the housework. And just it'll be trial and error, seeing what works for you. But for me, that is what works and I'll get it done. It might take me the whole day to do it, whereas it might take someone else a couple of hours. But it'll still get done and I'll preserve my energy and I won't go into post-exertional malaise the next day, which is what can happen is when I um, do too much at one time, I end up crashing the next day. And with the pacing, that stops that from happening. So the next tip is one that I haven't actually done, but I do see a lot of benefit in doing it. Honestly, I really do. And that is to keep a chart. So you could keep a chart, for example, a weekly chart. You could put all the chores that you need to do different times, giving yourself some ease in terms of knowing your limitations, but putting it on the list. Or you could have a to-do list as well. That would work just as well, if not better. So you're putting your intentions down and that might give you more encouragement to get them done. Although I don't want you to be putting pressure on yourself or passing what you can naturally do, but it might be helpful. It might be motivational to do that. And also afterwards, you're able to tick it off what you did do. And like, let's face it, none of us are going to be able to do 100% of what we did do. But it might help us to see afterwards that we've actually done more than we thought we could do. And that will give us a bit of a pick me up, if nothing else. Speaking more generally, that is going to give you some more organisation. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of chaotic because of my condition. And I'm not good at keeping the organisation if with the best will in the world. I will make my plans and then within a day they've gone out of the window because I just can't keep up with the idea of what I want to do compared to what I can actually do. I think at least giving it a go and seeing it on um, paper might help and also help other people, not just you. A, they might see just how much you have to do if all the chores are being left to you but also you can put their chores on there and so they know what they've got to do, when they've got to do it. And, you know, let's face it, men are better with a list that they've got to follow. So the next tip I have for you is maybe once a week, once a month, once every two weeks, whatever you can manage, 
put a day aside where you just prioritize cleaning and if you're implementing the pacing that I talked about earlier this could be really beneficial to you I don't know about you but as a creative person I've always got something else that's higher priority than the cleaning for me YouTube because that is my job but even like when I'm not doing YouTube maybe I want to do some sewing I started sewing the top like shortly after I changed the content on here and I still haven't finished it and housework's even lower down priorities than that so you can see where I'm coming from this you can see where I'm coming with this um, my brain fog today it's a little bit touch and go so if you're making it clear to yourself that one day a week one day a week one day a month whatever you decide um, you are just going to focus on your housework that means putting everything else aside and just doing the household i don't know about you but when i'm just focusing on one thing especially with my brain fog it is much easier to get tasks done think about it this way if you're someone who sews clothes for example as i know quite a lot of you do when you think of a pattern and you've got your you get your fabric together you're planning out your project that you get working on your project and you are prioritizing that everything else goes by the wayside and like i'm talking from my own experience with sewing here but what happens is you get that garment completed within a few hours maybe two days max so if you put that kind of priority to your housework just one day out of a month maybe one day out of a week whatever your needs versus your capabilities are then you're going to be able to keep on top of your household a lot more easily because once it is clean it's easier to keep up to date let's get real for a minute where i fall down is i can go through the flat off usually it's if someone's coming around or end up blitzing it and making myself ill so when it is clean what i do is i try to make extra effort every day do a bit more just to keep on top of it now my problem is i then have a day in bed or two days in bed or three days in bed where i can't do anything and when i get up again it's a complete and utter disaster and i'm back to square one so that is something i need to come out of the next tip is to declutter things that you don't need i don't know about you but i'm a complete clutter bug as you would have seen in some of my previous videos i have got so much stuff and it's gotten out of control now if you're someone who's crafty or you like to sew etc then you are going to need your supplies and you should never ever get rid of anything that you're actively going to use and i don't buy into the minimalism idea that you should just get rid of everything and then you can buy it again if you need to that is wasteful and it's not good for the environment and we haven't got money to throw away have we so I'm, I don't buy into that idea, but what I do buy into is things that we don't need that are just sitting there we haven't used for years and years. They're not serving any purpose. We don't care. We wouldn't miss them if they wasn't there. Those kinds of things can go. So if you do go through and declutter or streamline what you've got, you're going to have less to clean up. It's going to collect less dust. There's going to be less potential accidents when you go flying over something ask me how i know it's just going to be easier to look at and be nicer be a more comfortable home unless you love clutter in which case keep your clutter if you feel that you might benefit from reducing it then i would really really recommend you do that i did it in this kitchen video before i updated my kitchen and i also did it in a couch unit in my bedroom on this video and on this video in particular you can really see my struggles with doing it with my chronic illness it's weeks later since i've done both of those and i am i'm totally reaping the benefits of that so the next tip might seem counterproductive to giving tips chronically ill people to manage their home um because this is going to create more work in the beginning that is to like make over or up date your rooms now if you've got the money to bring someone else in to do it i would wholly recommend that but if you didn't um there are small things that you can do to make over a room it might just be painting some cupboard doors or it could 
be just getting some new accessories it could be something really small or it could be something bigger like what i'm doing in my kitchen i'm completely overhauling my kitchen i am i would say i'm three quarters of the way through doing that now so that video will come to you at some point you know i've painted the walls i've put new tiles down on the floor i've got a new cooker these are all things that are happening i'm getting some new lights put in tomorrow so probably today it's probably done by now by the time you watch this when i was putting all my stuff back in the kitchen after painting it and rearranging the side you know like the kettle and what have you it felt so much more exciting to be in there and do it i just love my kitchen now well technically it's not it is going to be more work because you need to get that done but afterwards you are really going to reap it so i know i found that once i painted and i was putting the kettle and everything else back into the kitchen it felt a lot more enjoyable sorting everything out putting everything in its place there's nothing more demoralizing for keeping a house clean as a house that you just don't enjoy and so if you can like just update your room maybe one or two things is going to really help your motivation now i am speaking to motivation and the psychological side of chronic illness but i do think there's a psychological impact that we can't ignore with chronic illness particularly when we're pretty much housebound as i am i can do i can do a whole video on the psychology of being chronically ill if you would like me to so the next tip i have for you is to be careful how you talk to yourself as someone with chronic illness now this one is also speaking to the psychology rather than practical but i think it really impacts the practical aspects of keeping a house tidy and what i mean by what i just said is that you've got to be realistic about your capabilities i don't know about you one of the reasons i realized that my condition was a chronic illness rather than depression which is a chronic illness in itself but a different kind is that when someone's depressed they wake up and they just want to hide under the covers not everyone we do have high functioning depression but generally with depression, certainly my own depression, I've not wanted to do anything. I've not wanted to even get out of bed. With my chronic illness, the ME, the chronic fatigue syndrome, I wake up and I have a hundred things on my to-do list for that day. And then I achieve none of it. And that was the defining difference for me. And that is how I explained it to the doctors. And they would tell me for years and years, you're just depressed. And I'd say, no. I know the difference between depression and chronic illness. See, I've forgotten where I was going with that now. That's my brain fog. So I've just reminded myself that where I was going with that was that you have to be realistic about your capabilities because when you are, you are going to feel better about yourself because when we don't feel good about ourselves, our energy is reduced and that isn't really to do with chronic illness. That is just to do with being human but it will impact our chronic illness. If we already can't do a lot because of the fatigue from chronic illness, and then we add in to um, a bit of depression or a bit of not feeling great about ourselves and not being motivated, that's gonna bring down the amount we can do even more. So by being realistic with ourselves, we are being kind to ourselves. We're not being toxic to ourselves. If we say, I can only do, maybe I can do two minutes of washing up today, and you put that on the list, you might think, oh, that's not a lot, but that's just you talking negatively. You've got to say, that's two more minutes than I could have achieved yesterday, or two more minutes than if I hadn't done it at all. It's all about the way we talk to ourselves, further to that, being realistic with ourselves. Equally, it is important, when being realistic with ourselves, it is important not to talk ourselves out of stuff. Because I know when I look at my to-do list, I think, oh, that's going to take too long. I'm, I'm not going to do that now. I'll do the easier thing. And I end up talking myself out of doing things that I need to do that are perhaps going to take a bit longer. Whereas if I'd made a start on them, I'd be halfway through them. So I would really love to know down below in the comments, which was your favourite tip or do you have another tip that works for you? We are all very different with chronic illness. It's very individualised. 
but your comment might help someone else. So do leave it down below, chat to each other if you need to. I hope you got benefit from this video. If you'd like to see some more chronic illness videos, do hit subscribe. Chronic, when I was researching for chronic illness videos, there wasn't a great deal out there. And what there was, was frankly quite depressing. And that's, I never ever want to go down that road producing depressing chronic illness videos. I always want to uplift you and make things a little bit easier for you. Or at the very least, if I can't help you, then I hope to entertain you with it. And so if you do want to see some more chronic illness videos, give this video a like and subscribe. That will tell me that you're really interested. If you got some extra benefit from this video, do consider purchasing a coffee or I've got a thanks button down below as well where you can give me a tip. If you like this video, I think you're going to like the one that's on screen now. It's about productivity and chronic illness from a perspective of a creative person. Go have a watch and I will catch you in the next one. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Mwah.